Trent said it really, really good yesterday when he's like, you know, you don't have to be a biker anymore to own a Harley Davidson. And I went, that's true. Cruzy. Cruzy Originals, how you guys doing? Today we are doing a cam install on the one and only Jay Kinky, our master editor, filmer, and producer of all these beautiful videos that you guys watch. On his on on his Dyna. Jake's got two bikes, Sportster that he stunt rides, and he's getting very good at, coincidentally. And this Dyna is his road trip and bike, which Jake also puts a shitload of miles on a motorcycle. Uh, oil pump's getting a little weak. It's taking a while to build oil pressure, which is a good sign that the oil pump's going out, which is real common in these guys. How many miles are on this thing, Jake? 42,000. We're going to check the crank run out and all that shit while, it, while it's out, too, see how that's looking. The bike has not been abused, really. It's, you know, it's a nice, just good road tripper. It has been wrecked a few times now. Twice. Two good ones, huh? Guardrails and whatnot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's how you scrape the top of the pegs. But, yeah, so we're putting in, uh... Fueling 574 cam and a whole fueling cam chest. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a how to video. I'm going to explain what I'm doing along the way and how it goes and what it does. And we're also going to tune it here. We're just we're going to map it. He's got a PC5 Power Commander in it, which we've already got a map from Power Commander. They sent us one. It's, it's for this whole setup basically. We just download it and run it. We're not going to dyno tune it because we don't really need to. First thing I did was take the exhaust off, then we got to take the foot control off. Uh, I'm going to show you the fast and easy way to do this, some of the tools you'll need. I'm going to have to make a hike to my toolbox because this isn't my lift. The big tool. That's right, we're using bolt cutters. I'm doing it quick. I'm doing it fast and furious. Life be like, ooh, ah. Uh. I do love me some OG Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious has definitely gone to shit over the years. Big impact on my life that movie was back in the day when I was racing imports and drifting and shit. And just let that guy swing out the way. I got a little oil pan under here because there's going to be a bunch of oil coming out of the cam plate itself. Yeah, and Fast and Furious 2 was dog shit. And then there was Tokyo Drift. That was the best one, hands down. What do you mean drift? If you weren't in the drift scene, you didn't really know how good that was and how legit it was to the scene because like, every stand-in, every every little scene of anybody in that movie was someone from the drift scene or from the import tuner world, all that shit. When he was on the plane flying into Japan and it's showing everybody on the plane, everybody on the plane was somebody, dude. Like the dudes from Apex, Reese Millen was sitting in the in the shit, a bunch of chicks that were drifters back in the day. So we were losing our goddamn minds in the movie theater when that shit popped off. The gaskets on these are always baked on, so you gotta give them a little whack. Some blackness. I'll put some latex gloves on because oil doesn't only kill liberals, it also causes cancer. And I really don't like getting my hands dirty because dirty hands is a dirty job. And they have these little retainers that go in here, but everybody likes to use my fucking toolbox and I put my shit back so I don't have any. So that's a needle. This actually, I use this for taking small wiring clips out. This comes with heat wrap for exhaust. This is what holds it together. It's a good tool to keep. Don't heat wrap your exhaust because that shit is garbage. This is the hydraulic tensioner. We gotta take this guy out. You put this needle in here to keep this thing from shooting out and losing all, all the guts out of it because it is spring loaded. We are putting new tensioners in this. We're putting fueling tensioners in it, but this is just a good habit, you know? Keep your shit nice. Suctiony bitch. That fucker's toast too, look at that. 40,000 miles is pretty good. If this was an early model spring-loaded cam chain tensioner, it would be all the way through the aluminum now. Pinion gear. Zip that bitch off there. Cam gear. Ah, oh, it's a tight one like a tiger. Gotta give them a little wiggle. They gotta come off evenly too. Just keep them just like this. The chain needs to go back on the same direction. You can't flip this thing around because everything like sets in the teeth and all that shit. So this is your cam sprocket spacer. See this guy? It's got measurements on it. 
What do we got in here right now? We got a 110, which we'll have to do some measurements later and shim this thing accordingly when we change the cam out. We'll get to that down the road. I'm going to leave the oil pump. These are the oil pump bolts. I'm going to leave them bolted to the cam plate because we're not putting in a different oil pump, so it doesn't matter at this point. All right, now we gotta get the push rods out the way. Push rods have all the spring pressure pushing down on the cams. I can't pull this shit out right now because it's under load. So, push rod, screwdriver, little retainer tab right here. Can you see it? You just pop it out. Pop it out. But there are parts of the push rod tubes that we will be reusing. We gotta put different tubes in, we're putting in adjustable push rods, all that shit. They're usually baked in the place really good because the O rings are been cooked for 40,000 miles. That's also why they're staying up on their own right now because the O-rings are fucking cooked. Ugh. Huh. This bike should make about 90 horsepower. It's a 96 inch, so with this cam they usually make about 90 horsepower, mid 90s foot pounds. 103s usually make about mid 90s horsepower to 105, 106 foot pounds. It's pretty good with this cam with a good pipe. An M8. With this equivalent cam, like that one's a 114, we just did a 475 S and S cam in it. It will probably make 120 horsepower, which is fucking crazy, man. With a bolt-in cam, that is crazy. So now we're gonna take these bolt cutters, and cut these cocksuckers right off. Yeah, this right here. It saves you about two and a half hours of taking the gas tank off and pulling the rocker boxes and the rockers off and all that shit, which is unnecessary when doing a cam job like this. Put some in. You got to put adjustable push rods in with a cam like this, no matter what. Why waste your time trying to save these push rods? I'm gonna do a full chop cut rebuild, brother. Yeah. And honestly, dude, it feels good. Cut these sons of bitches with a pair of bolt cutters. <laughs> you work on Harleys as much as I do. It feels good to take bolt cutters to it anytime you can. Allen's 316s. Allen's, there's no fucking metric shit on this anywhere. Nothing fucking pisses me off more when motherfuckers are like, oh, what is that, a six millimeter? No, it ain't a fucking six millimeter. Allen's is a fucking Harley Davidson, God damn it. The only thing that is metric on a Harley Davidson is the suspension and the brakes because that shit's not made in America. These are the tappet blocks. That's what they're technically called. Lifters are technically called tappets. I don't know what that's all about because they'd be tapping it. Son of a bitch. I need to soak your fing lifters. I fed up there. We're gonna walk over here and do something that I should have done in the first place. This is kind of the lazy way of doing this, but it works really well if you don't have a syringe, which I do have a syringe for this, but I'm not gonna dig it out right now. I also can't find my goddamn knife. I'm going to put them in this cup right here. Nice clean cup. They have to be filled with oil. You got to, like, they're hydraulics. You got to pre fill them to get all the air out of them. This hole right here, can you see it? I have a syringe that goes in there and you fill this full and you pump them until fluid pumps out the top. But I'm guessing you guys don't have one of those. So you can just put them in a cup, fill a shit full of oil. You'll see some air bubbles and all that stuff pop out of there. This actually works pretty good. These guys right here, the only thing you're going to keep out of these old push rods. The rest of these are. Retainer ring, which most of the time you don't need this, but keep it just in case. And the spring. The rest of this stuff, trash. And if you notice, like if you look down here, see how. All my shit is fucking organized and clean. So when I come back and put the shit together, I can just go lock tight and go pop, 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 and lock tight all these. I know everything everywhere it goes, what goes with what. I don't have a bunch of shit scattered everywhere and a pile of fucking everything on my toolbox or on my lift, any of that. It says a lot about a mechanic on how clean and organized his little work area is and how he takes care of his shit. You got a fucking disaster area where you're working? Guess what? The motor you're building is going to be a fucking disaster area too. Hacksmith. You're fucking hacksmith. If you're all fucking dirty and your hands are all fucking dirty, your job's going to be all dirty. Don't be a hack. Be a goddamn professional. 
take the time to make it nice and the job will go a lot faster and a lot better and you'll be a lot happier in the end that's for sure back to the tapping blocks gotta bang them off they are baked on yeah peel it off there throw the gasket straight in the trash throw the o-rings straight in the trash it goes in the trash so later on when you're putting the motor back together you see an o-ring laying there you don't go did I not put that in the motor? And now you're tearing it back apart to find out. Because you have to tear it back apart to find out. You can't just go, ah, f*** it, I probably did. Because there is no probably in motor building. There either is or there isn't. And you have to know. All right, here's our old lifters. This thing's definitely on the cooked side of things. Holy f***, dude, they're f***ing wasted. I'm going to clean this up so you can see what kind of condition this is in. See all these chatter marks in there? Those little lines and how it's kind of dull in the middle and it's not a uniformed color? That's a smoke. Hey, your lifters are smoke, dude. So that's definitely something you want to change. The sides, though, you also want to check the side skirts and see if there's any scarring or any lines. That will tell you what the lifter bore looks like. These look really good on the outside. That's a good sign. So your, your cam is probably smoked as well. Life be like, ooh, uh... Fast and furious! Drift! 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 <laughs> Donk Kong, Drift King, man. Drift. The original limiter hitters right there. It's got some O-rings and shit holding it in there. There we go. Nice little, nice little popski. Cams, everything are coming out as one unified. Yep, those are forking smoke. Do you see those lines? Discoloration. All right, well, we're going to check a couple other things I'm going to go over with everybody. spark plugs out. I'm going to put this thing in sixth gear as soon as I find where I put my gloves. There we go. Sixth gear or fifth gear, whatever the highest gear is on your bike. I should clarify too that this cam install is on a late model twin cam. So things will be different if you're doing a cam install on a five speed or early model because they have cam bearings and shit like that you got to change. But the early model ones, you got to install the cam bearings. You have to press the cams into the plate. You got to do some shit like that. This guy you don't have to. It's a lot easier. We are going to change the inner cam bearings. We're going to put Torrington bearings in there because the stock bearings that come in the Harley Davidsons are dog shit. I'm going to hook up this fueling. This is to check pinion shaft runout. This tells you if the crank is true, how the crank is in. So that's why I took the spark plugs out, put it in six gears so this way I can rotate the motor over with the back wheel very easily. So this guy is not a very expensive tool, a couple hundred bucks I think. But it is definitely, if you're going to put cams in a bike, if you're going to open your cam chest up at any time to do anything at all ever, you should check the runout on your crank. So I'm going to set my dial to zero. Right there. Spec runout, maximum runout is 11 thousandths. In the case. Do it in the case most of the time. 11 thousandths is max spec. If you're under 11 thousandths, a lot of guys will be like, oh my god, your crank's out by 6 thousandths. We're going to have to change this thing. They're f***ing lying to you. So don't let them hustle you into that. Damn, Jake, that's pretty good. Can't see it where I'm at. What do you got? Looks about three. That's goddamn good. So, Quite honestly, that's probably the best twin cam crank I've ever seen. They're usually really close to the to the max. I've seen them 30 thousandths out from factory. Straight up. Take it apart, we'd check them, be out 30 Gs. You'd be like, what? So, you know, right there, brand new crank. Harley, Harley cranks are garbage. Harley hasn't made a good crank since the Evo. The Timken bearing bottom end early model bikes it's like, you gotta get an early model, it's just got a Timken bearing bottom end, which really all that means is it, it doesn't side play. There's no side load in it. It still has a pressed together piece of shit crank in it. So there's, you're not really gaining a lot because you can take one of these and we don't even do Timken bearing conversions anymore in these. We just run black bearings on both sides, which is a new bearing that Harley came out with. You put a black bearing on both sides and if you torque the compensator properly, that's the main problem with these twin cams that don't have Timpkins is the compensator is not torqued properly. And that's what sets the side to side play. If you torque the compensator properly, you don't need, really need a Timpkin that much anymore. Would it hurt to put a Timpkin in? No, it doesn't hurt. They're good shit. They're just really expensive. 
And if you're not building a whole bunch of power, you really don't need one. And buying a bike just because it has a Timken bearing in the bottom end of it is not going to make that bike any better because the bearings aren't normally what goes to shit. It's the side play. It's the wheels that they slip because the pin is just a press fit that holds the flywheels together. So you got your crankshaft, pin, flywheels like this, pins down here, and that's what makes everything go like this. And then the pin is just pressed together. So when you're banging gears, your flywheels are heavy. So like you're clutch dumping and banging gears, those flywheels go whoop, and they walk. And then you're fucking rotating all fucked off. And that's when you get a bunch of shake in the handlebars and vibration. You'll feel a bunch of vibration in the bike from it when it happens. And they go to shit. It's not normally like the bearings that go to shit. I've, I've only, I've actually only seen a crank bearing fail once in a twin cam. And it was just the bearing actually, the clip, the retainer, someone had built the motor. I bought the motor from a motor company and they didn't put the retainer in and the bearing walked out of the case into the cam plate, broke the oil pump into four pieces like a pie and destroyed the motor. And when I contacted that motor company, they gave me $200 to help me rebuild it. That was their warranty plan. <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck you. If the crank's not welded and pro plugged, don't mean shit. Okay, so that's that, man. Crank looks really good. You also want to check the pinion shaft for scarring. See the lines on this one? They're always going to have lines because it's just running on a bushing. But if you run your fingernail across it and it feels smooth as glass like this one does, this thing's in really good shape, Jake. Besides the cams look like shit. They were smoked. And I bet if we pull that oil pump off there, it's smoked as well, too. But the rest of the bike, the crank is in good shape. The shit that matters is in good shape. I'm gonna start putting the cam plate together. I'm gonna get myself set up and then we'll get back to you guys. I'll show you how I put it together and all that good stuff. Right now, I'm gonna take a brief intermission. Hopefully YouTube times that commercial right now. So you get all this shit laid out and clean this guy up a bit. It's back to being a biker. I think I've come to the conclusion that I'm not a biker anymore. I think I'm a motorcycle enthusiast these days because I'm more into like racing and stunt riding and kind of doing more of the sport side of it and less of the biker side of it. And I think being a biker, real biker, is putting shitloads of miles down, partying your ass off, fist fighting dudes and fucking chicks all over the place. That's like, that's biker shit. I got a fine ass old lady that I love very much and that ties me down in a little bit of different ways. F me, man, I've become a motorcycle enthusiast. Back to this, I am installing a Jim's cam tool chest kit. Uh, if you don't have this tool, you can go to Harbor Freight and get a blind hole bearing puller. It's a big orange kit. It's got, they pull in there and they swedge out and you pop, 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 pop them out. And then I'll show you with the old cam how you can use the old cam to drive the old bearing in. I'm just gonna show you how to set it up. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna do this shit proper. Everything's better when you're getting a nut. This guy screws on here. Then this thing swedges out that thing in the inside that holds it into the bearing. Give her some love taps. Who knows what song that was? Comment down below. It's just some of the voices in my head that are singing to me right now. <laughs> Life's definitely more entertaining when you're paranoid and schizophrenic. And if you're new to this channel, you should check out the rest of our stuff because we do do just some, some dope shit. Okay, well it came out. I gotta take the whole goddamn thing off now. It's kind of a pain in the ass. It's definitely faster and easier using the Harbor Freight tool. Just put it in there, beat the shit out of it, and she comes out. Look at that bearing. That fucking bearing right there. I pulled it right out of there. Okay, so can you see in here? See how the bearings are spaced apart with a cage? The bearing we're gonna put in is a Torrington bearing, so it's solid bearings all the way around. It's not bearing cage, bearing cage, bearing cage. This is this is a cheap piece of shit right here. This is this is Harley Davidson. Same, same shit. Jam this guy in there. Same as the other side. I'm gonna Pull this out till I feel that lip hit the back of the bearing. Just gonna set this, that'll set my depth. Then I'm gonna hammer this guy in. And we're turning, and we're turning, and turning. As the world turns, so does the crescent wrench. Faster and faster and faster. So I'm gonna show you the trick for putting cam bearings in if you don't have this tool. Don't use this cam, because it's the new one. Use the one that came out of the bike Put one of the old cam bearings on there just like that 
Then take your new cam bearing, these are both old, but get a new one. New cam bearing goes on the end, hammer, gris, not grease, but assembly lube, and just pop it in there until it hits the lip. It'll change tone. It'll go from like a pop, pop, pop to a ping, and then you know you've bottomed out and you're dialed. Gotta make sure it's straight, gotta take your time, gotta pay attention, gotta feel the thing, you know? But that's the, that's, that's the OG do it yourself -er way right there, double bearing it. Old bearing, new bearing, and you always press against the numbers. See how there's numbers on that bearing? Can you see them? You always press the numbers, because the number side is gonna be the flat side. The other side, this is a rounded taper edge. That's for going in the hole. Much like the tip of your dick, it's tapered so it goes into the hole. Tapered so it goes into the hole. Flat like your butthole, it doesn't go in. One thing, here's some real biker shit. You ain't got a knife on you at all times around here. I kicked f***ing Trent in the nuts every day he walked in without a knife on him for quite some time until he got used to packing a knife on him. You can use it for anything on your bike really when you break down. You can use it for opening beer bottles, which is quintessential. Alright, this guy just goes in here and you actually put it in the tool and wrench it in there, but I'm not a fan. Hear that tone change? Now it's real sharp. Better watch your tone. She's bottomed. I'm only lubing the outside so it slides in easier, but I filled the whole bearing full of assembly lube. Assembly lube and shit inside a motor is very, very important. Put this thing together dry, you're, 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 it's f***ed. You're burning it up as soon as you start the bike. Cause these things don't build oil pressure when you first build them, which we're gonna prime this thing. I'm gonna get it all back together. I'll show you how to do all that. Tone change, hear it? Done, seated. I'm gonna clean all these ports out. We use PJ1 contact cleaner. It's like brake clean basically, but it doesn't attack paint and all that good stuff. It's all safe. get all our assembly greasy shit off the cams it's just to keep them from rusting and stuff like that but it collects dust so we clean them off and on that all right over to the old cam plate here just chinch her out and we're not going to use remember which way the direction of this chain we're going to reuse this chain on the new cams but we're going to run it the same direction this guy goes in also going to need this guy, which we need to check this clearance as well. When setting up this one, there's timing marks. See that little dot ski there? We need to line this guy up with the same dot. Need to jump some teeth. Squirt juice! I'm going to squirt juice these up. I'm going to stick it in the cam plate and double check it make sure I'm not overthinking this a little bit. Cam plate's already clean. I'm going to fill these full of juice. There's no such thing as too much assembly lube in this kind of situation because these are plain bearings. See, there's no bearings in there. They just run off of oil pressure and oil passaging through the journals there. Keeps the cams floating in a nice light pressurized film of oil. Put a little on the outside. A little on the inside. It's really nice because the other ones you have to press into the bearings and they're kind of a bitch, the old school style. Do they line? F no, they don't. Look at that. Oh, I'm on. Looks pretty dialed, huh? Dot to dot. Dot to dot dot. I'm going to put this spacer back in. You just clip it and forget it. This is. Oh, you fucking dirty cocksucker. One more of those inventions that I. <laughs> One more of those inventions. That whoever invented the C-clip, I think that I should get to fist fight at least once in my life. Okay, this just, you want to make sure you don't have any excessive play. Make sure she rolls nice and smooth. Gonna put a chain tensioner back on the back of her. I'm going to put some red on these because I want them to never come out, really. Got to pull that guy. These are important to save for your next cam job. Those are little tools that I was missing.
these are 120 inch pounds we'll give her some spins make sure she feels free free as a bird this one comes with a little plug you can plug it off that would be for soft tails B motors you plug this port off because it's different but if you come over to this guy on the A motors you got three ports one two three so we're gonna run one two three run them all run them open run them wide should be dialed all right now we'll put the oil pump together o-ring back in the back here this is a return port those guys go there right there a nice little happy o-ring right there a little lubricant I'm gonna fucking squirt juice all over this guy I'm gonna fill this fucking thing full of fucking assembly lube helps build oil pressure when the oil pressure building time comes I fill her full and get some grist on her tis a firm one a firm one I tell you I'm gonna put the G rotors in or gyroid or joke a whore or some bullshit G rotor is what S and S boys call it, so I like that. It's very simple. I'm going to lubricate the living shit out of these. I'm also going to fill these gears full of lube. All the gaps. There's that guy. Gears again. Lubricants all over it. gears a lot of lubricants I know lots of lube back here this is where the gears ride against it's very important to have this lubricated up I'm gonna put some in the channel I'm gonna lube the shit out of these cams I'm gonna fill the pinion shaft hole full of lubricant Alright, fueling does not use Loctite on the cam plates. They say it can interfere with torque. They throw a little engine oil on them. Let's get them started basically right now. I'm going to do a bit of an alignment process. Oil pump bolts, a little bit of oil on them. SNS calls for Loctite. Fueling calls for oil. I'm going to go with whatever the company calls for. That was a good idea. Because then when the time comes, these are just, I'm not going to put any pressure on them. I'm just going to bottom these guys out, and that's it. Not one ounce of pressure. The cam plate needs, uh, oil pump needs to move freely on the back of the cam plate. Lightly snugging. In a crisscross sort of pattern. Right. I'm going to rotate the shit out of the motor. Four to five full rotations. Let everything center a little bit. Then we're going to torque the cam plate. Then we're going to do a bunch of rotating again. 120 inch pounds. If you didn't hear me, just the cam plate itself. Now I'm just going to double check every one of them, make sure I didn't miss one. We'll start here, go around in a circle. Dial. I'm gonna rotate this thing five more times. And with this guy flat on top each side. Now I'm gonna set this to 10 inch pounds. I got a pretty serious procedure for the old fueling. It's 10 inch pounds, my shit don't go to 10 inch pounds, so I'm going fucking just snug. I'm gonna rotate again. 
Now I'm going to go 45 inch pounds. Which is almost nothing. Another five rotations. Oh, uh, now I'm gonna go 90 inch pounds, do the same thing again. Very small increments and it's very tedious, but if your oil pump is not lined up right, it will be cockeyed on the cam plate and it will eat itself into the cam plate and you will lose much pressure. 120 inch pounds. Rotation. that shit set for about 10 minutes kind of let any fluid bleed out of the holes any of that shit and then we're going to retorque every bit of it again not all through those whole steps but 120 inch pounds on this then we're going to rotate again then we're going to torque the oil pump again but until then i'm going to put some lifters in some push rods actually i'm going to do some push rod assembly right now You got three different sizes of O-rings that come with your push rod. This is the center of push rod. The fatter one goes from the top to the head, and this goes down the tap of blocks in the bottom. And we got to disassemble every one of these, so it really only takes a couple seconds to do this too, and it's definitely worth it. Dielectric grease. We use this on all O-ring seals and everything. Always lube your seals. So you don't end up blowing a seal. They got bigger dicks than you think they do. All right, first thing, collar, tube, spring that you saved off the old shit, down, retaining washer. Washer has a flat side and a little bit of a curved side. It's where they stamp it. It's going to be curved. Curved is down. Flat side goes against the O-ring. Always. You got more mating surface that way. That bitch slides on there. Bottom tube, that one's done. All right, now back to the cam plate and cam shit. I'm still soaking those lifters. I want to put those in as last as possible so they can soak as long as they can. I'm going to take this chain off this guy. Chain needs to go back on the same way it came off, so I'm going to lay it down the way that it came off. I'm going to use the old cam gear spacer. It's going to go right there. This guy is keyed. Let's get it keyed up, right? See the fat one? Got a fat chunk there. Dot. Dot faces out. Goes on there. This guy goes on there. You're going to need a straight edge and a set of feeler gauges to do this part right here. I'm just going to fucking blast these down real quick with this guy. My Technically you should torque this to 25 and 35. This thing is 22 foot pounds breakaway power on it. So it's good enough. As long as they're snugged all the way down, it's definitely snugged all the way down. In my feeler gauges, I'm going to go to ten thousandths. As long as you have less than ten thousandths of clearance, everything is fine. I'm going to take the edge off the flattest part of this bottom gear, which I got some f***ing clearance issues here already. And you see this gap? I can run this under here. It's definitely bigger than ten. So I'm going to change that. We're going to have this thing off and on a few times. This is a... Uh, a 110, I'm going to try and find like a 115 or so. I got a bunch of cam shims. Well, I'm 10 thousandths out, so hopefully this 120 puts me right on the money. This is very important for the chain alignment. If it's off, the chain's going to be clocking weird, you know, and it's going to wear the chain and the gears out. When building motors of any kind, every step is important, honestly. Now, if this is out too much, 
it's going to make a gap either here or here. If you got a big gap on top, it means it's out too much. If you got a big gap down here, it means it's in too much, or you'll have a gap all the way across. Fuckers dialed, dude. Dead on. Titties. Alright, now we throw a chain on. You gotta line these up like we did the cams earlier with the dot. See that? Now I'm gonna take this guy, get it on that keyway, and I'm gonna turn it. Line up my pinion shaft. start with the pinion shaft on the bottom torques to 25 foot pounds Jim's makes a tool that locks these gears in place for like 75 bucks I feel like it's a waste of money let's put a screwdriver in there works really good cam gear 35 foot pounds locks it in beautiful save 60 bucks on some bullshit you don't need next we're gonna put the cam chain tensioner in a little red Loctite Start with the bottom one. You can take the top one because you're going to have to push this guy in because it's on chain tension. Do not forget to take that out. That will ruin your day. Now we're going to torque these to 110, 120 inch pounds. Torqued. Torqued. I'm going to double check it again. Just if there are any oil pressure back there. Feels good, doggy. I said I had them all laid out here so I can just drop away with Loctite. Hundred and twenty inch pounds as well. Quarter twenty bolts. Quarter twenty bolts are almost always one twenty. Cross hatching the pattern like always. Blowing the old Loctite out of these holes makes for a lot truer torque. Notice these had a lot of Loctite in them. Lifters. These guys are super lubed. I'm gonna leave them very, very oily when we drop them in there. Take the rest of this oil. This is Klotz Racing, full synthetic, 60 weight. I'm gonna pour the rest of it down into the cam chest, just to help prime the pump just a little bit more. It's gonna fill them ports up. Might not really do anything, but I got all this oil, and I'd rather put it somewhere productive. Yep. Oh, tap it blocks. No blue Loctite on the, on the shitters. They torque to 120 inch pounds. You can't really get a torque wrench on the back one, so I use an Allen key and I just make them good and tight. There is a how to do push rod adjustment video on our YouTube that is already up that you can go watch to see how to adjust the push rod. It's a day at work, bro. And not one single person at my work got sick. I did what he asked me to do. He told me to paint what he wants to do. That's on him. Just lubricating fucking seals and sticking them in holes right now. Big one, the thickest ones go up here, and the round, skinny ones go down there. These are quickie installs, so thread it all the way down. There is no exhaust and intake difference, they are the same, so you just jam them in there. Alright, just so it's all threaded up in there, this guy's up on there, the lock nut. It's nice and loose. I just thread them out enough so there's some thread sticking out right here. Do a little bit of thread so I can put the lock nut on there so the lock nut doesn't fall down in here. It can be a bit of a bitch to get out. I'm about 75% there. And I'm about 75% ready for a beer right now. They used to say when you adjust push rods, you gotta do one cylinder at a time. You gotta wait for the other that cylinder to bleed the push rod down once they're adjusted before you rotate the motor over for the next cylinder. They used to say it took two five sixteenths wrenches, which is different size wrenches now, but you used to take two five sixteenths wrenches 
and four cigarettes. <laughs> four cigarettes. So while you're, you you'd set the first one, you went out, you smoked two cigarettes, and then you come back in and you get to adjust in the back one. And that was like real Harley Davidson shit. Everybody smoked in the shop, and there's usually a pile of crystal meth on the back of the toilet, a bunch of nudie magazines in the bathroom. No shit. For some reason, there's always lots of porno mags in the bathrooms of Mike and Harley shops back in the day. I always thought that was creepy. Do people need beat off sessions back in the day a lot? It was like smoke a cigarette, blow a little glass, and fucking jerk your dick raw, and then get back to working on a motorcycle? Like, what the f was going on back then? I'm not into fucking jerking off to nudie magazines at the shop on a fucking Saturday. So, you know, what's the world coming to? Who knows? One cylinder is on overlap, the other one is on compression. So you can rotate the motor around, and how you tell if it's on overlap when you rotate it around, if they go up and down together, you kind of jerk it back and forth, the tire and the, the push rods will go up and down. If they're like boom, 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 that cylinder's on overlap. The other one would be on compression. I really think that real biker, real, real biker, if you want to be what real biker has always been and always probably will be, it's crystal meth. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta be just strung the fuck out on crystal meth, either selling, using, stealing, or doing something with crystal meth. And that's how you know you're a real biker. So, I think these days, I am a motorcycle enthusiast. I'm going to hold these two down until I get overlap, which I'm on overlap, that's convenient. Alright, so I'm on fucking compression over on this side. I'm also going to shine a flashlight down there. I just like to make sure that the lifter is all the way down. We also have a video, which I will put at the end, that you can link to and go watch. It is a full tutorial on doing a push rod adjustment on a Harley Davidson. So I'm going to set these to zero lash, which means make sure you can feel it up in the, the top of the cup up there in the rocker. You can extend this out to where it just touches the push rod, or the lifter, I mean. I got a silver pen. I'm gonna mark the face of this guy. Mark the face of this guy. Teens wrenches. I'm gonna put four turns on this guy. There's four. Lock this guy down. When you have a fresh set of lifters in here sometimes they take a little while to really build pressure when you start the bike so sometimes when you start the bike it will make a lot of noise for a while they say it can take up to 20 minutes to build pressure I've never had them take that long sometimes a few minutes about as hardcore as it gets usually and lock the fucking lock nut down really really good do not put Loctite in those you over real good in the long run. And compressed. So now I'm going to spin the motor over several times. Make sure that the valves aren't binding. They're not hitting the piston. Make sure my adjustment is correct. And I'm going to watch these guys for overlap. Moving together. You film in on those dudes. You should be able to see it pretty clearly when I come around. Yep. I'm going to stick some shit in the other side, just double check my piston height. Dialed. Now same shit. Mark them with a pen. Four turns. checking and uh, that's it put some caps on nice medium sized screwdriver shove that guy up into that o-ring up in there Make sure she seats all 
Alright, popping these on can be kind of a bitch. Normally on a stock one, they don't have this notch. So you just use a flat head and you just pop them on there. But these get stuck. So I use a Phillips. Shove the top up in there. So it's up on the collar, up in top. And then take the two blades of the Phillips, set them on there so it's got a flat surface. Pry that guy down. Pop it into place. Ah, back ones are tough. Alright, well, I'm going to change the oil when I put the exhaust on, and then we'll prime it and uh, go from there. We're going to do this quick. We're going to prime this thing. So normally you just run off the dummy light up here. That, that, that shuts off at 5 PSI of pressure. I don't trust those things, so I have a test light hooked to the positive of the battery, and I'm going to touch the oil pressure sending unit right here. All it is is a ground switch. So when you get oil pressure, it kills the ground, so you can't, you know, it kills the light. So I'm going to pump this thing a bit. Spark plugs are still out. You only want to do it in short spurts so you don't burn up the starter motor. Yeah. There we go, we got oil pressure. That means the whole cam chest, the oil pump, everything is primed, full of oil, so now when we start the bike, it's not going to be dry and it's not going to scavenge itself. That's it, Trent's going to load a map in it, and we're going to take it outside and start this thing. That's how you do a cam job on a late model twin cam, and by late model, I mean 2006, 7, depending on what model you got, and up. Hydraulic chain tensioners, that kind of shit. Uh, it's all done, like I said, if you want to see more in depth about the pushrod shit, we have a pushrod video. It's already up. How to do pushrods on a Harley or something like that. Check it out. I'll try and put it down in one of these corners. I don't know if you guys got any questions down below. Go ahead and comment, ask, ask away. I'll try and answer as many of them as I can. Try and help you out as much as I can without being a smart ass as much as I can. And uh, that's it. Hope you guys liked it. Remember, like, subscribe, ring that bell, get the notifications, all that stuff. Help us keep growing this channel. I, you know, we got a solid channel here. I'm real proud of what we're doing. We just need to get a big, we need to get it out there, get that following growing, help us out. And uh, tell a friend, tell a friend about Cruzy Originals. It'll change your life. I know it changed mine. Ah, I mean, closing statements from the chair. I'm tired now. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but don't let it be. Uh, deceptive that took all day to do that cam job. It's a hell of a job. It really is a job for a professional. This is, uh, if you want to tackle it yourself, feel free. Just take your time and pay attention to what you're doing to make sure you do it right. Uh, you can't half-ass this shit. You'll f*** your motor up and plain and simple. If not, bring it to us, Cruzy Originals. We build motors at high, high levels and we make high horsepower. And all these parts that you saw in here will be available on our website. We'll have a link down in the description below and all that good shit. Remember to like and subscribe and thank you very much. Here's the originals. I'm running for president in 2024.